instructional video program made possible through a grant from the United States Olympic Foundation has been produced and endorsed by the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating. It is offered as an educational tool for the development of active or hopeful participants in amateur roller skating competition and persons who are or may wish to become coaches and or judges of amateur artistic roller skating competition. The techniques and the disciplines of artistic roller skating that it illustrates are recognized by the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating as official standards for which successful competitors are expected to strive, towards which competent coaches are expected to teach, and by which commissioned judges are expected to score. Viewers are encouraged to utilize all the technology available on video playback units, such as still frame, variable play speed, and instant review to individualize as much as possible the presentational pace of the instructions and illustrations. A printed guide has been created to supplement this video production and should be attached to the cassette case. The subject of this program is international dance skating. Your coach and commentator is Linda Clemens, seven-time international dance champion from Massillon, Ohio. The demonstration skaters are Linda's 1988 world-class dance national champions, Julie Heider and Alan Desterhoff. As we watch Julie and Alan do their championship free skating program, Viewers should be aware that interpreting the rhythm of the music for the audience is fundamental to success in international dancing on skates. Half the performance score, in fact, is based on the skater's timing, expression, and unison, the three components of rhythm. However, the other half of the team's score is based on execution, which is comprised of form, accuracy, and placement. This means that each pattern must be exact. Skating the prescribed edges is mandatory and the accuracy of the steps is critical. Since skaters must first master execution before turning their attention to rhythm, the elements of execution, form, accuracy, and placement are the primary focus of this instructional video. We begin with a thrust step. Here is Coach Clemens. The thrust step. Feet are in a parallel position. The thrust or push is the motion of the free leg as it leaves the floor. The free leg is in a full extension with the toe turned out and down and the hip closed. Every step is created at the and position when the feet are together. Note the body is in a straight line from the shoulder through the hip to the skating foot. Some incorrect body positioning would be that where you use your hip to create the edge instead of using your knee and ankle. You see where the body is out of alignment. The same is true when skating backward. The feet take the floor in a parallel position and the thrust is the motion of the free leg as it leaves the floor with the toe turned slightly out and down. All steps are created from the and position. And note the body line. Some incorrect positioning when going backward would be lunging forward to create the push. Notice the hip line is being broken. The progressive step. A three-step sequence in which the skating foot progresses past the and position with a thrust or push on all three steps. Note that the second step, the push is with the outside of the skate, with the outer front wheel being the last to leave the floor.
some incorrect progressive motion would be pedaling the inside skating foot after the extension, pedaling the foot forward and not placing at the and position. This is an incorrect skating position. Also, an incorrect position is crossing the right foot over the left when progressing and then pushing. The foot must take the floor at the end position and skate past to progress. The backward progressive run has the same technique. The right foot is extended and pushed from the outside front wheel being the last wheel to leave the floor. It is a push step on all three steps. The backward progressive. Some incorrect positioning would be walking the skate back behind the foot to progress. That is an incorrect motion. It is stepped or walked. The cross step. A step in which the free foot is passed close in front or behind, crossing at the ankle. After the cross, the, the skating foot is employed at the and position. An incorrect cross would be one where you lift the toe to pick the skate up and then set it alongside or advance it forward. Right here, the skate is advanced. When skating backward, the cross in front is the same. It's a parallel position to the floor, crossing at the ankle and stepping at the end position. Cross behind is the same. Nice tight crosses. An incorrect cross would be one where after the cross you walk back or advance the foot past the end position. This would be incorrect. Cross roll. A roll in which the free foot is crossed or feathered across the tracing to the new edge and foot. Using the outside wheels of the trailing foot to push. A cross roll. When backward, the cross roll is feathered behind the heel, and the free foot is pushed from the outside of the edge. Outside, outside. Some incorrect techniques 
are that in which you advance the foot and cross it instead of rolling the edge. Incorrect positioning. This is also a walking effect. This is not a cross roll. This is a very wide cross and that is incorrect. When skating backward, also the walking back position is incorrect. That is a very wide cross and not a cross roll because you see he does not get pushed from the free foot. The Mohawk turn. A step in which the free foot is placed to the instep of the skating foot. All back to forward turns are placed behind the heel. Choctaw turn. A turn from forward to back or back to forward from one foot to another on edges of different character, outside to inside or inside to outside. The Choctaw turn. The swing. A continuous motion of the free leg, not placed or kicked, always creating a straight line with the body on the skating side. The free leg is extended with the toe turned slightly out and down. The backswing is also a continuous swing with a free leg. The foot position is slightly turned out and down. Be careful not to use the hip to create the swing. Notice the body line at the end of the swing is in a straight line. Partners should remain in close body positioning and square to each other's position when face to face on the swing. Some incorrect swings would be that in which you use the free leg to create the edge or end up in a cross position. Drop three. A one foot turn in which the free foot is placed to the and position on the next beat of music. And position. A swing three. 
a one foot turn in which the free leg is brought close to the skating foot and finish with an extended free leg position held for more than one beat. Swing three. A raised chasse, a movement in which the free foot during the period of becoming the skating foot does not pass the original skating foot but is placed on the floor beside the skating foot with the new free foot remaining alongside the new skating foot. In most cases, chassés are not more than one bead in length. The Keats Foxtrot. It is important to skate with a soft knee action and deep firm edges. It is a light airy dance to be danced, not stepped. Step floor is a cross roll for both partners. The lady then does a knee bend to match the man's turn. This is aimed to the center and around. The lady then does a cross three aimed on a curve to the barrier. The man's back to forward mohawk is done slightly to the inside of the lady with a cross trace. The next two progressive steps are done in track. After the man's cross three, the lady aims her left forward outer mohawk to the man's right side, turning to his right hip for the four beat edge. A, to step a strong left inner to right inner edge. The Rocker Foxtrot. The dance derives its name from the ladies' step number five, the rocker. This dance should be skated with strong edges, close body unison, continuous flow, and musical interpretation. The lady's rocker turn should be aimed toward the center with the turn executed slightly off the outside of the man's left forward outer edge. The cross roll is aimed to the center the next step being a left forward inner, sometimes finished in a tucked position with the free leg. Close attention should be paid to the outer outer mohawk turn. It should be done hip to hip with continuous body rotation to step the right forward inner edge in a close hip to hip position. Good assistance from the man in this section enables the lady to execute her rocker at the right placement. There is an also a cross trace on the man's left forward outer three turn. The Harris Tango. Various quick steps lend to the tango rhythm. 
dancers have the opportunity to create their own expression of musical interpretation in this dance. Special attention should be paid to the direction of the cross sequences. Lobes one and three aim to the center, lobes two and four to the barrier. The cross sequences should be close and accurate. The man's turn on lobe three is a shallow rocker turn. The turn for the lady on five is a cross roll. Followed by a continuous swing aiming to the barrier. The progressive sequence is aimed to the barrier and around. The mohawk turn is at the top or center of the lobe with the ladies three aimed out. Good flow of this dance is important without obvious effort or visible pushing. The American Waltz. The dance expression of this waltz is characterized by the free leg motion of the three turns and the flow of the swings. Careful attention should be paid to the free leg unison of the partners in this dance. Note that the radius of the corner lobes are smaller than that of the straightaway. A continual cross trace between the partners will enable the close skating that should be evident in this dance. The turn should be executed to the instep of the partner, which will ensure continuous flow. Care should be taken on the turn not to lift the hip. Enabling the skater to do a rocker instead of a three turn. European Waltz. The partners should remain directly facing each other in this dance.
Careful attention should be paid to the direction of the lobe aiming so that the axis is equal into and out of the center lobe. The amount of turns is optional provided they are equal for both partners. Usually four or five turns are used. All turns are done with a cross trace position and all turns should be executed at the partner's instep. The flirtation waltz. This dance is done in Kellyan position. The first mohawk turn is aimed to the center and around. The change of edge of the swing is on count four of the music. Careful attention should be paid to the mohawk turns that they are to be to the instep. The five-step or pirouette turn for the lady should be aimed to the center and that they follow a baseline in and around the lobe. The Choctaw turn for the lady, step number 19, is a closed turn to an inside edge. The 14th step. A quick, lively march with only 14 steps. Hence the name, the 14th step. The barrier lobe should be equal. The swing in the straightaway is to be deep and free flowing. There is a cross trace position for the man on this step. All forward to backward mohawk turns to be done to the instep, all back to forward from the heel. The ladies cross chasse, step number nine, should be crossed, close, and step 10 to be placed at the and position. The Dench Blues. The free flowing edges, deep lobes, swing and Choctaw turn enable the dancers to interpret the blues.
careful attention should be paid to the aiming of the first cross section for the lady, to the center and around. The man skates his progressive run up, around, and across her tracing to enable him to turn his cross three at the lady's left hip. The Choctaw turn should be done on an angular baseline to the corner of the rink to ensure equal lobing on the turn. A left back outer cross behind roll should have continuous team rotation to enable partners to skate a strong right forward inner edge. The ladies left forward outer three aim to the barrier and around the lobe. A common error is rocking off the left inner forward edge here for the Choctaw turn. The quick step. A quick, lively, fast dance with short gliding edges and close footwork that must be precise to interpret the character of this dance. The dance starts at the long axis of the rink. The swing Choctaw turn should be deep without rocking off the last speed of the swing to ensure a proper Choctaw turn. Using a baseline on this straightaway will enable the team to do each edge as prescribed. Step number 17 must be a definite inner outer change edge to be executed on one beat of music. The Viennese Waltz. The Viennese is a lilting and graceful dance. Good body unison with neat, clean footwork and smooth transition from one side to the other make this dance a beautiful waltz. Steps 1, 2, 3, and 16, 17, and 18 may be done face to face or slightly to the side. The cross change cross sequence is one of the most difficult in the dance. The Mohawk Choctaw turn section should be done smoothly with a continuous rotation to enable the partners to turn simultaneously. The last part of this dance is the same as the first. The Argentine Tango.
This dance has all the characteristics of a flamenco dance. From the quick steps for the lady on the first straightaway to her twizzle turn, it typifies the flamenco. The first chassé of the dance should be at the center of the rink. The first cross is aimed center with a change of edge to the barrier. The man's counter turn is aimed to the center and around. The lady should follow in behind his turn so as to be face to face after his turn. The twizzle turn for the lady is two turns, a counter three on one foot. For the man, a swing Choctaw turn to the instep. The cross section should be done smoothly with equal edges. The swing should be outer to inner with a back to forward Choctaw turn for the lady. The Starlight Waltz. The Starlight is a quick and lilting dance reflecting the characteristic rhythm of the Viennese Waltz. The first three lobes of this dance should be deep and quick moving. The free leg movement is optional before the change of edge, then brought behind the tracing. The drop three section should be with equal rotation and good positioning after each turn. The lady's closed mohawk turn should be skated to the man's hip. The mohawk turn sequence should be smooth and continuous. On step 27 and 28, the man changes hand positioning, taking the lady's right hand behind his back and doing a left three turn in front of her. The cross roll swing should be smooth and around the lobe to enable the last steps of the dance to be aimed to the corner. The Italian Foxtrot. A lively lilting foxtrot with many intricate changes in positioning and intricate footwork. Demand should be slightly inside the lady's tracing for the first two steps of the dance. And then again on his change of edge before the mohawk turn. 
The next section is done in track position. The lady does her cross section to the side of the man. The outer to outer rock section should be equal with a gentle motion. On step 29, the man crosses behind the lady. She then steps to the man's back to do her three. The last step of the dance is outer inner swing. The Iceland Tango. The first three steps set the mood of this tango with a typical tango positioning. The serpentine turn section and the slow swing Choctaw section exemplifies a romantic tango. The progressive run should be aimed to the center and back to the corner before the Choctaw turn. Careful attention should be paid not to rock off the edge before the Choctaws. On the serpentine turn, the man goes out of track position to execute his left forward inner three. The bracket three section should have good depth and even flow for the aiming of the Choctaw swing section. The Paso Doble. Paso Doble was derived from the music used for the formal procession of the matadors into the bullring. It is a bold and aggressive dance with dramatic character. The running steps at the beginning are a preparation for the straight flat slide or scissor step in which all eight wheels remain on the floor. The cross section after has a definite change of edge on step 11. The next cross section should be done hip to hip until the Mohawk turn which ends face to face. The next cross roll section should be even in edge with a swing drop Mohawk for the lady done on the and count. The Westminster Waltz. The Westminster Waltz is a stately dance. Throughout the dance, many changes of position occur and should appear effortless to enhance the refined character of the waltz. The slight change of edge should occur at the end of the three run sequence to enable a deep inner to inner mohawk turn. The free leg is then swung back on the left back outer aiming the right forward inner to the barrier. The lady turns in front of the man changing arm position in preparation for the swing counter rocker sequence.
The next right forward inner turn for the lady is a three on count four of the music with the next cross section done face to face. The man then threes to the lady's right hip. She threes to a track position with the man to step the right forward outer swing. The Killian. This dance requires close, accurate footwork and controlled unison of rotation. Step nine and 10 is an open Choctaw. The free foot must be placed in front and to the side of the toe. Strong shoulder check is needed to enable the skaters to do a cross behind on step 10. The Dench Blues. The free flowing edges, deep lobes, swings, and Choctaw turn enable the dancers to interpret the blues. Careful attention should be paid to the aiming of the first cross section for the lady, to the center and around. The man skates his progressive run around and across her tracing to enable him to turn his cross three at the lady's left hip. The Choctaw turn should be done on an angular baseline to the corner of the rink to ensure equal lobing on the turn. The left back outer cross behind roll should have continuous team rotation to enable both partners to skate a strong right forward inner edge. The ladies left forward outer three aim to the barrier and around the lobe. The preceding instructional video program, made possible through a grant from the United States Olympic Foundation, has been produced and endorsed by the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating. It is offered as an educational tool for the development of active or hopeful participants in amateur roller skating competition and persons who are or may wish to become coaches and or judges of amateur artistic roller skating competition. The techniques in the disciplines of artistic roller skating illustrated here are recognized by the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating as official standards for which successful competitors are expected to strive, towards which competent coaches are expected to teach, and by which commissioned judges are expected to score.
This presentation on international dance is one of a series of five such videotapes available through the USAC RS National Office in Lincoln, Nebraska. The four other programs are free skating, pairs, American dance, and figure skating. All of the oral and visual elements of this program are the exclusive copyright property of the United States Amateur Confederation of Roller Skating, which has sole authority for its use and reproduction.